Good morning. In the previous videos, we had discussed what a retaining wall is, what a lateral air pressure means, and the different types of lateral air pressures which include the active, the passive, and the at rest conditions. Correspondingly, we had discussed what coefficient of lateral air pressure is. We had discussed Ka, Kp, and K0. Then we had moved on to Rankine's earth pressure theories for a dry cohesion less backfill material. We had discussed a case where you have a submerged backfill material. Then we had discussed a case where you have a water table with a certain depth below the ground level. Then we had discussed a case where you have an inclined backfill. And then you had, we had discussed a case with the layered backfill as well. Now, in each and every case till now, we have drawn the pressure distribution diagram for lateral condition for active and passive. Later on, we had moved to a case where you have a soil which is C5 in nature, cohesive and frictional, wherein we had studied the critical depth, the unsupported vertical cut height, etc. Now, we'll try to discuss a few numerical problems based on what we have discussed in the theory. The first question is quite simple, the simplest you can expect. You have a retaining wall which is 6 meter high, it holds sand with angle of internal friction 30 degrees, so phi is equal to 30 degrees and gamma unit weight is given as 19 kN per meter cube. You are asked to compute the active earth pressure acting per meter length of the wall. Now. The cross section of the retaining wall is shown here. It's 6 meter high and it retains cohesion less soil, 19 kN by meter cube unit weight and phi equal to 30 degrees. So since it's cohesion less soil and no water table is present, it's quite simple. The pressure distribution diagram starts at zero and will have a linear distribution downward with height or depth and it will attain a value of Ka into gamma into H at the bottom. So the question is asked to find Pa. Pa is nothing but the area of the triangle of base width Ka gamma H and height H. And Pa will be acting at a height of H by 3 from the bottom. Now you are asked to find Pa value for a meter run of the retaining wall. So when you have a retaining wall like this in perspective, you take the cross section and what you get is the figure on top. So you're asked to find per meter on PA. So it's quite simple. PA is equal to KA into gamma H by 2. K gamma H into H by 2. I'm sorry. So it's nothing but the area of the triangle. So KA, you will have to find out. Gamma is given as 19 kN per meter cube. H is 6 meter already given. So KA, we know is equal to 1 minus sine phi by 1 plus sine phi. Phi is already given in the question, it's 30 degrees. So Ka value turns out to be 1 by 3 or 0 0.33. Substitute the value into the equation to get Pa. The value of Pa that you get will be around 112.86 kN per meter run, which means for every 1 meter length of the retaining wall, there will be 112.8 kN force acting. Now that was a very simple problem. The next one, you are asked to find the intensity of active and passive earth pressures separately on a retaining wall holding a backfill of unit saturated weight 22 kN per meter cube and angle of internal friction 30 degrees. The height of the wall is 8 meter as shown in the figure and the water table is at the top which means like this. So the soil is submerged. So compared to the previous example, the main difference is that you have the water table. So for the same reason, the right angle triangle will have a base of Ka into gamma dash into H instead of Ka gamma H plus you will have another triangle whose base width will be equal to gamma w into h. So fundamentally you will have two triangle distributions. To get the base width of the first triangle you need to have Ka for which you are given 30 degrees angle of internal friction. So Ka is 1 minus sin phi by 1 plus sin phi. 
which is again equal to 1 by 3 or 0 0.33. Gamma dash is a submerged unit weight. You are given with a saturated unit weight 22 kN per meter cube. To get the submerged unit weight, you have to subtract gamma w. So gamma dash is equal to gamma sat minus gamma w and the value that you get is 12.2 kN per meter cube. So you know K enough, you know gamma dash H, I mean you know gamma dash, you know H, you know gamma W. So to get the intensity of active pressure and passive pressure, you don't have to find the area of the triangle. That's one takeaway from this question. In the earlier question, you were asked to find the pressure per meter run of the wall or the force per meter run of the wall where you had to find PA. Now in this case, you're asked to find the intensity of active and passive earth pressure. So you'll have to limit your answer to finding out Ka gamma dash H plus gamma W into H and you don't have to find the area of the triangle. So K gamma dash H plus gamma W into H is 0.33 Ka gamma dash is 12.2 H is 8 gamma W is 9.8 so the answer that you get is 111 kPa for active case and to get the value for passive case, you just have to replace Ka with Kp. Kp is nothing but 1 by Ka or 1 plus sine phi by 1 minus sine phi. So 0.33 gets replaced by 3 and the value that you get is 371 kilopascal. Moving on to the next question. You have a retaining wall, smooth vertical back with a backfill with the following properties. Gamma is given bulk unit weight 16, gamma sat, saturated unit weight 20, C is equal to 0 which means it's cohesion less, phi equal to 28 degrees and the retaining wall has a height of 6 meter. Now three different conditions are given for which you will have to solve. One is at rest condition for fully drained case which means gamma is involved. Second active condition for fully drained case which means active condition with gamma. Case number three, you have the water table at three meter depth and drainage is not allowed. So we'll try to discuss each of them separately and in addition to that you'll have to find the point of application of the thrust at the third case. So case number one, you have at thrust condition for fully drained case which means you have a retaining wall here like this 6 meter high gamma is 16 phi is 28 so you have the earth pressure distribution diagram like this with the base width k0 gamma into h right because it's at rest condition k0 gamma h now gamma is given 16 h is given 6 meter you have to take gamma 16 because it's given fully drained case which means the soil is not saturated. Now to get K0 we can use the JK's formula 1 minus sine phi from which you will get K0 gamma H and the area of the triangle will give you P0 or the value is nothing but the area of the triangle half K0 gamma H square acting at a height of h by 3 from the base. k0 is equal to 1 minus sine phi. Phi is already given the question 28 degrees. So k0 gets a value of 0 0.53. p0 is the area of the triangle half k0 gamma h square giving you a value of approximately 152.6 kN per meter run. So that was about case number one. Case number two is quite similar with the only difference that K0 gets replaced by Ka. So at first condition changes to active condition. Gamma remains the same, H remains the same. So we have case number two with Pa acting as H by 3 which is equal to half Ka gamma H square. Ka is equal to 1 minus sine phi by 1 plus sine phi. Phi is already given the question. So Ka gets a value of 0.36. Pa equal to half Ka gamma h square 
will have thus a value of 103.68 kN per meter run approximately. Now the third case of the question, it's the same active condition but with one difference. So since it's an active condition, you have to find Ka which has the same value 1 minus sine 5 by 1 plus sine 5.36 because phi is the same. Now the difference compared to the previous case 2 is that you have the same retaining wall 6 meter high but the water table is at the mid depth of the backfill. So you have 3 meter above the water table and 3 meter below the water table. In such a case again active condition is the one that we are interested in and hence you have a right angle triangle distribution. It starts from 0 at the top because you have h is equal to 0 there and for layer number 1 it varies linearly with depth h1 to attain a value of k a gamma h1 there at the interface. So you can consider these two separate layers layer number 1 above the water table and layer number 2 below the water table. But please keep in mind that both these layers will have the same Ka because the soil is quite the same. The difference is that here in layer number 1 you have the bulk unit weight gamma and in layer number 2 you have the submerged unit weight. So in layer number 1 you have taken Ka gamma H1 at the interface from 0 it linearly increases up to that value. Now at the interface gamma into h1 will be the vertical stress or sigma v. So that vertical stress will act as a surcharge load and what you get below is a rectangle with ka gamma h1 analogous to ka into q while we had discussed the theory for surcharge. So gamma h1 acts as a surcharge at this level and you will get a rectangular distribution beneath that now considering a variation of gamma dash h2 you have a distribution like this it starts from 0 at the interface because h2 is equal to 0 at the interface h2 increases linearly so k gamma dash h2 is the base width now gamma dash is nothing but the submerged unit weight you are given with the saturated unit weight so you can find the submerged unit weight now some standard textbooks give you all these three triangles, I mean all these three geometries put together with the base Ka into gamma H1 plus gamma dash H2. That's also, that's also a right approach but still I thought of separating these three things for you to understand better. So we have one triangle considering the layer number one and the base of that acts as a surcharge and what you get is a rectangular distribution plus you have k a gamma dash h2 in addition to that you have gamma w into h2 again a triangular distribution so this concept these two triangles are the one that we had studied for submerged condition you had k a gamma dash h plus gamma w into h so whatever comes beneath the water table these two triangles will take care of it now, fundamentally now you have three rectangles and one triangle. Rectangle number one, I mean triangle number one has a height of 3 meter with a base with k gamma h1. Rectangle has a height of 3 meter and a base k gamma h1. This triangle has a height of 3 meter with a base width of k gamma dash h2. And the last triangle has a height of 3 meter with gamma w h2 as a base. So you know all these values because you know gamma, you, go, you know gamma saturated, you know gamma w and since you know gamma saturated and gamma w you can find gamma dash. So fundamentally I know the geometrical parameters of all the four figures I have for pressure distribution diagram. Like this, k gamma h1 the base is 17.28, k gamma dash h2 the second base of the triangle is 11 approximately third gamma w into h2 is 30 kilopascal approximately. I would suggest you to work out these on your own and to cross check whether you are getting a similar answer. And now your intention is to get 
the value of PA, which is nothing but the sum of areas of all the geometries that we have here. So when you add the areas of all the geometries that we have, you will get PA. And to find the action of the PA, you will have to find the point of action of the resultant. Had it been just a triangle, it would have been at h by 3 from the base and now it's not as simple as a triangle it's a combination of three triangles and a rectangle so what i've done is i have written first triangle as a second rectangle as b third triangle as c and the fourth one as d so and i know the base width and the height of all these geometries for instance a has a height of 3 meter and a base width of 17.28 B has a height of 3 meter and a base width of 17.28 C again 3 and 11 D again 3 and 30 so knowing all these things you can find the sum of the areas of all the geometries which will give you the value of PA now to get the point of action of PA you need to take the resultant for instance The resultant of the magnitude of the area of this triangle will be acting at a height of h by 3 from its base. So we'll take a common axis there, which is the base here. And at for, for triangle A, the resultant will be at a height of 3 meter plus 1 by 3rd of 3 meter, giving you a 4 meter height. For the second geometry B, it's a rectangle, so it will be at the mid height. So it will be acting at a height of 3 by 2, 1.5 meters. Likewise, for C, it will be at a height of 1 by 3 from the base because it's a triangle. And for D, it will be at a height of 1 by 3 from the base. I am sorry, this is not 1, it is 1.5. It's an editing mistake that has crept into the PowerPoint. So once you know all the areas, and all the points of action you take the resultant quite similar to the engineering mechanics uh, numerical problems that you might have come across you take I can write it as y dash or y bar as a1 y1 plus a2 y2 plus a3 y3 plus a4 y4 by sigma a a1 being the area of the triangle number a then you have a rectangle then you have a triangle then you have another uh, a triangle etc and y1 in this case will be 3 plus 1 y2 in this case will be 1.5 y3 will be 1 by 3 y4 will be 1 by 3 so solving that you get the resultant thrust which is the sum of areas as approximately 138.36 kN per meter run and the point of action turns out to be 1.75 meter from the base again I would suggest you to Work these on your on your own and just cross check if you're getting a similar answer.